Hi everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. Welcome to Ham Cured Smoke and video 27 in the IC7300 from A to Z series. This time we're going to look at the settings for the CI-V interface. Most modern rigs include an interface to control them remotely. CI-V is ICOM's name and protocol for this interface. The IC7300 includes two separate ways for you to connect to this interface, giving you some additional options. I've been using digital mode software to control my rig directly using this interface with my PC. I haven't yet experimented with any of the software and hardware that allows you to operate your rig as a remote base from anywhere. ICOM's CI-V interface also allows you to control multiple rigs in this way. I guess I'm going to have to break down and get ICOM's RSBA1 or one of the other remote operation packages so I can do some videos about that. In the meantime, we'll take a look at the basic settings. So let's get to it. Today, we're going to take a look at the CIV functions and the settings for them in the menu. And the place you get to that is the connectors menu. We've been there before and we've touched on the serial port briefly but today we're going to go into a little bit more depth about what the settings mean. So you press menu and then I want to thank a couple of people who made suggestions about uh, having a little difficulty seeing what I'm pressing sometimes so I'm going to use a little pen stylus here and hopefully make this easier for you to see. We're going to go to set and then we're going to go to connectors and then the menu that we want, and actually we'll use the knob, or I could have used the buttons, but uh, we're going to use the knob today. And it's down on the third page, and it's down here in their CIV and USB serial function. Now we're going to go to the USB serial function first. You can see it's set to CIV here. There's two choices. CIV and RIDI decode. If you set it to RIDI decode, you get a couple more options here, which is the decode baud rate. And you can see you've got 4800 through 38400. The default is 9600. Uh, and then this is for keying the rig, and we're going to cover this in another uh, episode. This is for keying for CW and RIDI through the USB port. So I'm going to go back up one and I'm going to set this to CIV and um, let me make one more comment about that. If you set the decode function to RIDI, what that does is when you activate the RIDI decoder that's built into the radio, it will send the decoded text out the serial port. That's what that's for. Uh, again, a really cool function, but probably not terribly useful for most people because if you're doing RIDI, you're probably going to be using, you know, one of the PC-based uh, programs for doing that since it's a digital mode. So, I'm again, not too sure the use case for that, but it's there if you need it. So, let's get to the CIV settings. So, CIV according to some sources I've found on the internet, is Computer Interface 5. Apparently, ICOM had four more before that. And these are the settings for CIV. Now, on the 7300, you've actually got two separate CIV interfaces. There's the CIV interface over the USB port, using the USB serial port. And then there's also a CIV interface over the remote jack and you can see that here on the manual page that uh, shows the remote jack on the back of the rig and you can use those together or separately and we'll talk about that in a few minutes now the other fortunate thing about CIV is you really don't need to touch any of these settings if you're using this with most of the uh, rig control software that's out there because the default settings are perfect for ham radio deluxe and for FL Digi and for uh, WSJT-X and any of the other ones that I've tried the default settings seem to be fine so let's take a look at the settings 
So the first one is the CIV baud rate, and of course the default one here is fine because the default one is auto. So the rig will sense the baud rate that the commands are coming, and it'll set itself accordingly. You can fix it to be 4896 or 192 where it won't change, it'll stay at those baud rates. If you want to do that, you need to set your interface software to be the same baud rate. CIV address. This is the address for the radio. The default address for the 7300 is 94 hex. That's what the little h is. And every ICOM radio model has a different address associated with it. The CIV interface, the way it's set up, if you use the remote jack, you can actually connect multiple radios on one essentially daisy-chained serial port. Uh, ICOM makes a little hardware adapter for that. It's called the CT-17. You can see that here. It's shown in the options page uh, at the back of the manual, and it's one of the accessories you can buy for the rig. If you're controlling multiple radios, if they're all different models, then you can leave this setting alone. They'll each have a different default address. If for some reason you wanted to control two 7300s that were connected to the same computer, then you would have to set this address to be different for one of them. Uh, well, different for both of them actually, but you'd have to make one of them different than the default. So that's what that's used for. Again, if you're just using a single uh, radio and you're controlling just controlling a single radio with nothing else on the line, you don't need to fool with that. Uh, CIV transceive, on and off. This, uh, the default is on, and what this means is the rig will send out its status, frequency, mode, etc., over the remote port. And uh, the way, what that will do is if you have, say, two different HF rigs connected on the remote port, the 7300, if you make changes to the frequency, it will actually force the other HF rig to mirror it. Uh, in fact, you could have two 7300s connected together just with the remote jack, and that's just an eighth-inch cable. If you had those two rigs and nothing else, and you plug the cable between them and you set this function on on one of them, as you tune and change modes, it will make the other radio change along with it. Again, if you're not doing multiple rigs, this really doesn't do much for you. Now, here is the CIV USB remote transceive address. The default on this is zero. That's also what ICOM calls their universal address. Um, so, for example, if you're using the remote jack and you send a command, if you send it to zero, zero, any rig that's on the rem on the remote connection will respond to it. This is specifically for the address on the USB port if you're using the USB port separately. And again, I'll talk about that in a minute. This is also the address that um, that ICOM's, uh, is it RSA B1? I'm going to have to look that up. If you see something on the bottom of the screen, I'm not remembering that name right. Uh, that's the remote control software that ICOM sells for the 7300 and, and for other, most of their modern rigs. Um, okay, now on the next page, CIV output for antenna. The default on this one is off, and uh, the only choices, of course, here are off and on. What this does is it causes the rig to send out frequency and status information to a remote antenna controller. And again, that's on the remote port, not over the USB port. Um, it sends out basically frequency and band information. And if you have a remote antenna switch that's set up to automatically switch an appropriate antenna for each band, let's say you've got a, you know, a, a tri-bander for 10, 15, and 20, and you've got a dipole for 40 meters and an automatic antenna switch, if you turn this function on, and you have an automatic antenna switch connected, 
when the rig changes to 40 meters, it will automatically switch to your 40 meter dipole or whatever antenna you have the rig the the antenna controller set up for. Um, and then the last one, and this is where I mentioned you can have the the report, excuse me, the remote port and the USB port be separate. The default setting here is link to remote, and what this means is that the serial port on the USB jack and the serial data on the remote port are just linked together inside the rig. So anything that comes in either port, the rig looks at the same, and if the rig sends anything out, actually including this antenna information, it will go out on both serial ports. So it'll go out over the USB port, and it'll go out that remote jack. If you set this to unlink, then you get two more choices that get ungrayed out here, and that is the USB baud rate, which again, like the remote jack, the default is auto, and you have a few higher speed choices here, you'll notice. It's got 4,800 all the way up to 115,000. And then echo back, and Again, this is not something that I, I think any of the modern uh, digital software or rig control software uses. If you turn this on, what the 7300 will do is any commands that get sent to it will be echoed back over the serial port, over the USB serial port. This was something from, I'll call it the old days, in the early days of RS-232 and... Um, let's just say maybe less than reliable connections for data over phone lines and, and other things, echo back was a common way of confirming that your commands were getting through. You'd send a character and you'd see the character get echoed back so you knew what you were sending was correctly getting to the other side. Um, again, the default here is off. So, um, and again, those are only available if you unlink um, the USB port from the remote port. Why would you want to do this? If you want to use the antenna output to control an automatic antenna switch and you want to control your rig using rig control software or, you know, FL Digi has FL Rig that will set the frequency and read the frequency back from the radio. Uh, but you want to use your antenna switch and have the rig automatically control the antenna switch, you can unlink the ports, and then when you set this output for an antenna switch to on, the rig will send the data for the antenna switch out the remote jack, but then you can still use rig control over the USB serial port. That would be one use case where you would keep these uh, separated. Uh, I'm going to set mine back to the default for now because I am i do not have an automatic antenna switch or any of those devices. So that's it. Kind of a quick uh, overview here. Um, if you are going to do some more sophisticated playing around with your radio, you may need to um, use some of these settings. As I said, for most of the rig control and digital mode software out there, I haven't touched any of these. I've left them all in their defaults, and everything works just fine. That's about it for uh, the CIV settings, but at least now you've seen what they are. Well, that wraps it up for this time. I mentioned during the segment that I had gotten a couple of comments about using a pointer so that you can see what I'm doing a little more easily. I really do appreciate uh, compliments or criticisms or suggestions, uh, questions, anything at all. Uh, please feel free to leave a comment at the uh, bottom of the video where the comment section is. And if you're enjoying these, please consider subscribing. You can do that with the little button that pops up at the lower right at the end of the video or just on the YouTube channel page. As always, Thanks for watching. This is Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Cured Smoke.